Wisconsin, often associated with beer culture, Harley riders, and cheese lovers. But in terms of animals, what do they really have there? Like, I feel like most people would probably agree there's not a lot of biodiversity there. I mean, you could name off like birds, maybe a deer here and there, but in general, it's not like the most biodiverse place, right? The reality is Wisconsin is surprisingly diverse and many animals evolved to thrive in its four season climate. So my goal of this video is to introduce you to some lesser known animals that call this state home. Some of which locals are probably not even familiar with. First on our list is the slender glass lizard. And I know what you're thinking, it's a snake, not a snake. It looks like a snake, but I'll explain that in a second. Despite being one of only four lizard species in Wisconsin, I think it's safe to say that most people probably have no idea of its existence. In fact, I feel like most people probably don't even think lizards are in Wisconsin. Like, yeah, a lot of people here go down to Florida and they're like, oh yeah, there's all these lizards, these critters, and then I come back here and there's not so much, which generally speaking is true, but we do also have lizards. They're just a little bit different, especially this one. This is a legless lizard. Dan, that is literally a snake. It's not a snake, but it's almost a snake. I mean, it's kind of like a lizard that's halfway evolved into becoming a snake. They belong to the family Anguidae, and these legless lizards were once four-legged lizards that have highly reduced limbs or no limbs at all. Now, despite having the snake-like appearance, they still hold a lot of these key lizard characteristics, such as movable eyelids and ears, and just strange, like, not snake movement. That's why we use taxonomy so we can kind of see the direction of the older animal to the newer rather than just kind of looking at it from face value and just calling it a snake, if that makes sense. I feel like it does. Anyways, another feature this animal has that I would consider kind of like a lizard-like feature is the fact that it can just lose its tail. The scientists call this autotonomy. And it's probably good to have something like this where you could just drop your limb instead of, you know, losing your whole body. That'd probably be bad, right? Next, we have the four-toed salamander. Now, I just have to say this, okay? Salamanders are extremely underrated. There's no world where you're gonna find this salamander and, no, no, no let, let me say this. There's no world where little eight-year-old you is gonna find this salamander and not wanna just hold it. You're gonna wanna put it in your pocket, you're gonna wanna take it home, <laughs> make it your own little Pokemon thing, okay? I'm, I'm not saying you should do that. Obviously, leave it where, where it is. But as a kid, you're gonna want that thing. And I'm not gonna lie, salamanders are underrated. We love frogs, we love bunnies, we love geckos, we love all this stuff, but we forget about the salamanders. Salamanders are cool, okay? Four-toed salamanders have, let's count it, one, two, three, four toes on its back feet. And that is a little bit different compared to most salamanders having five toes. These small salamanders cap at about four inches in length and are known for their red coloration. But if you flip them over, you'll see they have this white belly. And I uh, wrote this in the script and I don't know why they have a white belly. I couldn't find any information on that. Like, is it a breeding thing? Is it self-defense? Do they flip over? Um, I don't know, I couldn't find anything. But what I do know is just like the legless lizard, they have the ability to drop their tail to ward off from a predator. Something that's really interesting about this species of salamander is the females actually watch over the eggs. Like a lot of amphibians, they don't really care about their babies. They kind of just have them and then they're just there and then they kind of fend for themselves. But with this species of salamander, the females actually brood the eggs. And you'll see sometimes the female will just take care of their clutch of eggs that they had, or one female will actually be taking care of the community's eggs. Next up, the American paddlefish. It's a unique and ancient fish that can be found in the Mississippi River and mainly in the southern regions of the state. These fish can reach up to six feet in length and are known for their distinctive paddle-like snout, which they use to enhance their electro reception, similar to sharks and rays. They use this ability to detect prey, primarily consisting of zooplankton. Now to me, this fish really, really reminds me of sawfish. Have you ever seen one of those? That's what it looks like to me, but not at all related. Paddlefish are long-lived and take a long time to sexually mature. Females do not begin spawning until they are 6 to 12 years old, and they don't even spawn every year, which historically probably works out for the species when the food is abundant and their ecosystems are stable. But if you listen to the news or anything like climate-related recently, 
Probably no, that's not really the case. This species is declining and they're marked as vulnerable by the IUCN. Now, of the panelfish's family Polydontidae, there are six described species, four of which are extinct, and we only know that because of their fossil record. Now, of the two extant species, one is our friend the American paddlefish, we know and love from Wisconsin, and one is from the Yangtze River Basin in China. And actually, never mind, that one's extinct too. So, I hate to say it, but the American paddlefish is the lone survivor of its lineage. Ah, snakes. We do love to hate snakes, especially venomous ones. This is the Eastern Massasaga. It's a venomous snake, and most people probably have never heard of this one. Which is in contrast to the only other venomous snake here in Wisconsin being the timber rattlesnake. The Massasaga is a pretty small snake, typically reaching only two to three feet, which might sound like a lot, but it's actually really small in terms of snake size. Typically, you'll see them gray or brown in color with distinct dark, irregular blotches on their back. This species is known for its vertical pupils and other characteristics of pit vipers, like a triangular shaped head and the iconic heat sensing pits. Eastern Massasagas are generally found in wetlands such as marshes, bogs, and swamps, but they can also be found in prairies and other special habitats like underneath your porch maybe. Unfortunately, they do have a small native range here in Wisconsin and a lot of people just decide to kill them because they don't want them near their kids or anything like that. Which I guess I understand you want to protect your family, but everyone deserves their spot on the tree of life. So for the last one, I want to talk about a mammal. And I feel like a really good pick would be the Eastern Red Bat. They're known for their rusty or orange red fur, definitely setting it apart from the other bat species found in the state. And yes, there is six other species you can find here. Eastern red bats are relatively small bat species with a wingspan of around 13 inches and a weight of only a quarter of an ounce. They're active at night and they can be found roosting in trees under loose bark or in crevices of rocks during the day, and their diet primarily consists of moths and other bugs. Round of applause, everyone. Yeah. Now they catch these bugs in flight using echolocation abilities. In other words, bats use sound waves and echoes to figure out where things are. I'm sure you heard someone say, you're as blind as a bat. And the problem with that phrase is bats actually aren't really blind. They might not see great during the day, but in low light conditions, their eyes are actually really accustomed to the dark. So the reality is bats actually have better eyesight than us just during the night. All bats in Wisconsin, including the Eastern red bat, end up migrating before it gets too cold. Now there's not a lot of information on the migration of these bats. You might see birds during the day migrate in huge big packs, but you don't really see that with bats because they're more scattered and they do it during the night when you're never even going to see them. Some biologists speculate the migration of the eastern red bat goes all the way down to Mexico. And during this migration is when mating occurs, and typically the female is set up for birthing young by the time June hits. Though the eastern red bat is not considered a threatened or endangered species, I would definitely keep an eye on this one. Although Wisconsin might not have the same level of biodiversity as a state like Florida, it's still home to a diverse array of wildlife, including many species you've probably never heard of. From the slender glass lizard to the eastern red bat and many others, there's countless fascinating creatures that call this state home. I hope that this video sparked your interest in learning more about animals, especially the ones that are a little bit more low key. So if you like this video, maybe gain some brain wrinkles or lost some, that's also possible. Make sure to subscribe for more.